Hello and welcome back. In this part, we're going to study functions in Rust. So up until now, we have only seen one function, which is the main function. So when you will go to your projects folder, then you will type cargo run main.rs. You should see hello world after the compilation. Now you need to know that this function right here, this main function is your entry point. So if you try to change the name of the function, for example, let's say hello, immediately you'll find that you have two types of errors, these squiggly lines. The first one says function hello is never used. And that's because Rust expects that this hello function is going to be inside the main function, to be displayed inside the main function. That's why Rust doesn't understand what the hell is going on. There is only one hello function, but there is no main function. And this is going to be very clear when you will hover over here. Main function not found in create underscore three functions. This is the name of our project. So if you will try to run this function, you will find the same exact error message. The error E0601 main function not found in create um, and the name of your project. You should always have your main function as this is the entry point and immediately the Rust analyzer displays the run debug um, button here. It does the same thing when you will click on that, it compiles and runs the code. So any function in Rust starts with the keyword fn followed by the name of your function if we're not talking about the main function. If any other function you're going to write, it should start by the reserved word in Rust fn, which stands for function, of course. And then following that, the name of your function, parentheses, curly braces, and then you will have the body of your code here. Also, one very important point, any function or uh, variables for that matter should be written in snake case. Snake case should have all letters in small and separated by an underscore. So let's say that we want to create a function that says hello world, it should be written like so. This is the snake case. Also, there is what we call the kebab case. And that's simply hello, but separated by a hyphen and kebab because this looks like skewer between two pieces of meat. Uh, the main recommendation is to write your functions and variable names using snake case and not kebab case. Let's say that we want to create a different function. So let's create the one that we just uh, talked about, hello underscore world. Of course, inside per, um, parentheses, you can have different parameters. You can set your parameters here, but you know, we don't need that. And then you will print line, say here, hello, Rust. And here Rust is complaining because this function is not used. So we're going to delete that and we're going to pass this function here. So hello world, we're going to pass it here. And uh, yeah, that's simply it. Do control L. So if you run that, you should get hello Rust with the crap. Okay. Notice here that I've written the function below the main function. This is not available in all programming languages. You should define your function first and then call it afterwards. In programming, this is called hoisting, where you can actually define your function above or below, and then you can call it anywhere in your code. Hoisting also exists in JavaScript, by the way. Um, we can also insert input values, right? We can insert parameters and then uh, pass the arguments when we call the function. So um, you can insert input values. So let's say that we want to create a function that tells the height simply. So let me call this function tell underscore height. And in parentheses, I'm going to have the height and it's going to have data type of integer 32 bits. Then I will say my height is open close curly braces and then we're going to pass the height. Um, again, we can go above here and call this function. So I'm going to call the tell height function and the height that you, you can see immediately that trust is making things easier for you. So it tells you that you need to insert your argument here, which is height of data type I32. So I'm going to pass just an arbitrary number. So I'm going to pass 182. That's an integer of 32 bits. Uh, data type, or you can do it uh, u32 because this is 
unsigned, so the, um, the height should be always positive. Close that with a semicolon, control L to clear the terminal, cargo run main.rs, and my height is 82. Um, can do it just like that, centimeters, can compile that one more time. All right, so let's create a function together, uh, fn human underscore id, and inside here I'm going to set different parameters for this function. So the first parameter is going to be the name, and that's going to be of data type ampersand stir, which is a string slice. I've explained the string slice in the last video. Please go ahead and check it out if you're not sure what is the string slice and the difference between the string slice and strings. Also, the age, I'm going to set it to U32. Also, we can have a height. Um, I can make it F32, floating point. Okay, we can have some decimal points here. Open, close, curly brace. And again, I'm going to print ln. I'm going to say simply my name is placeholder. I am another placeholder years old. And my height is whatever centimeters. And then we're going to just declare those parameters. We have a name, we have an age, and we have the height. And don't forget to close that with a semicolon. Okay, so this is a human ID. And if we'll go ahead and pass that human ID here, human ID, you can see immediately that we need to pass different arguments, the name, the age and the height. So let me pass first, that's going to be um, a string slice. So I'm going to type Joel, that's the name, the age is going to be 55, without um, double quotation, and then the height is going to be floating points. So 182 Point three, for example. All right, if you will leave it like that, you will get an error. You can see that squiggle line here, and it will tell you that use a float literal. If you want to leave it at 182, you can do 182.0. You can leave it like that. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and run our code and see how it will compile. So it compiled without problems. My name is Joel, I'm 55 years old, and my height is 182.2. So like any other programming language, Rust's function can return a value. So functions do not only print lines, but they can actually return values. So we can do mathematical operations, and the result of that function is going to be whatever that mathematical operation will evaluate to. But before that, I will need to talk a little bit about expressions and statements, because this is a big deal in, well, any other programming language, but as we're talking about trust. So what is an expression and what is a statement? Simply put, an expression is anything that returns a value. And a statement, that's anything that does not return a value. So let me give you examples on expression first. Expressions could be any number, for instance. So five is considered to be an expression. Um, Boolean values are considered to be expressions a function that it will evaluate to something. So add, let's say three and five or three and four, whatever. This is considered to be an expression. The um, F conditions, so the control flow, actually all, all of the F condition and else is considered to be expressions. So if condition and here, whatever value one, for instance, else value two. So all of these are considered to be expressions in Rust. So again, expression, anything that returns a value. Also, expressions can include blocks, the curly braces. Blocks are very important, like in any other programming language. So here, whatever is from code inside this code block. So let me actually give you an example. If you will try to, so this is the main function, if you will try to declare a variable here, let x equal to, and you open your code block, so here is your code, you'll find that Rust doesn't like this idea. Why? Because simply Rust asks you to uh, consider using const or static keywords instead of let for global variables. So any variable that is declared outside of the main function should be uh, declared with the const keyword. Now we won't have any problems. 
only will have minor problems so the x should be actually uh, defined in capital letters let me just show you so const x should have upper snake case names so x like that so you can simply do underscore x but that's not enough because we need to close this with a semicolon and we should enter a value okay um but I'm not going to do that. I want to declare this variable with let keyword. So let me just enter the main function and let's do it here. So let's say that I want to create this expression uh, x like that, which is going to be equal to different variables inside. So x will have a price, which is equal to 5. It's going to have also quantity which is going to be an arbitrary number, let's say 10. And we want to display the result, the result of the price multiplied by the quantity. Okay, so we want the evaluation of the price multiplied by the quantity. Notice that this is the last line in this expression. Notice that this last line, I haven't written here any semicolons. Okay, here I should. Why is that? simply because any expression that evaluates to a certain value, a certain mathematical operation, will evaluate to the last line in that expression. So if you will leave it like that, price multiplied by quantity, automatically it's going to evaluate to 50. So this is a very unique feature in Rust. Alternatively, you can do like that. You can do return price multiplied by quantity and you can close it with the semicolon. But you know, that's not very, you know, rusty. <laughs> um, yeah, and again, we can do like that. So this is it simply. You have a code block, you have some uh, variables, you have a mathematical operation that evaluates to a certain number, and then simply you can pass this variable. So um, let's say, for instance, that we want to print the value of that. So print line, then we're going to say result is like that and let's actually compile the code and you can see here that the result evaluates to 50 as expected also functions return values let's say for instance that we have a function that adds two numbers the first number is going to be i32 of data type i32. It's going to be parameter a. We have a second parameter, which is b, i32. But this function that will return a value should have this arrow like that and should determine the data type that we want to return or that we want this function to return. And then in the body of the function, we're going to add a plus b. Notice that I haven't done like that, like we've done here in this variable, right? We are going to leave it like we have done with the price and quantity. We're going to leave it without the semicolon. Okay, so this function is going to evaluate automatically to whatever numbers are going to be passed as arguments when we're going to invoke this function in the main function. So let's uh, actually invoke that function. So um, what was it called? Add. So we'll do add and we're going to pass two numbers. The first one of type i32, let's say four. And the second one, let's say six. Okay, so this is a and b. So I'm going to show you something that's interesting. You can actually do like this, let y equal to add. So this is your add function. So you can do like this. So basically, you can, um, I'm going to copy that, I'm going to just pay, paste that here. Okay, and now what you have done is that you have assigned this function with the arguments four and six to a variable called y. So you can print that print ln. Okay. And let's just clear the terminal. Let's run that again. And you can find value of y is 10, which is the sum of four and six. All right, so alternatively, what you can do is print ln and um, you can say value from function 
add is and open close curly braces just full stop like that and we'll invoke that function close parentheses four and six and now let's go ahead and run that and you can find here that the exact same result value of y is 10 value from function add is 10. okay so these are expressions statements are very simple and very easy as we said that anything that doesn't return a value so as we said that in rust anything without um, semicolon at the last line in the function um, or whatever like we have done here in this variable is going to immediately evaluate to whatever that uh, operation is um, however statements almost always end with semicolon so if you would do for example let x equal to 10 you can't say for instance let um, let y equal to let x equal to 10 because this doesn't return anything so you cannot assign it to another statement so very quickly example for statements uh, variable declarations are considered to be statements so like we said like we have given the example let x equal to 5 this is a statement function definitions uh, the function definition in itself is considered to be a statement because it doesn't return anything also the control flow statements so if condition while condition etc all of the control flow statements so let me give you a final example i hope this was not too long for you guys final example on functions okay so i want to create a function that returns the bmi the body mass index the body mass index or the bmi is equal to the height in kilograms for instance divided by the height square so the height in meters square okay so this is the, the formula for the body mass index so how to do that okay so first of all we have our main function so we're going we're not going to touch that here but um you just add a comment here calling the bmi function that i'm going to create now so let's do it very very quickly we have uh the function i'm going to call it calculate underscore bmi open close parentheses and then i'm going to define my parameters weight underscore kilograms that's going to have a data type of f64 floating point with the 64 bits also i'm going to have a height under um oops sorry uh, height underscore uh in meters and that's going to be uh, also f64 so f64 and this is going to return this is the function that returns a value so this is going to return f64 data type then i'm going to take the weight divided by the height multiply by its own so height multiplied by height now i'm inside my main function let me declare these variables uh the parameters actually one is i32 and the other one is f64 but as we have um uh, when we have uh, actually set the parameters for the weight and the height here we have set it to f64 that's why you can see here that this is i32 uh, which is not correct so we need to set it like that now let's assign this function to a variable this variable is bmi and the function is calculate bmi we have different arguments to pass so we have uh actually we have our weight and we have our height okay good and then finally we're going to print that line so print line and i'm going to say your bmi is We're going to format it this way to display two decimal points so if it has uh let's say for instance 2.345 uh whatever it's going to display only 2.34 okay two decimal points and we want our bmi okay now let's go ahead and run that perfect your bmi is 21.13 so that's the end of the functions lesson. Hope it was useful for you guys. Not too long. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing and I will see you in the next video.